G'day everyone. Uh, had some <laughs> had some issues there. Not quite certain what was happening. It just wouldn't connect for some reason. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I've worked it out and I've got back in. So I thought I'd better have a chat because I, I couldn't get on on Friday. Obviously, I was doing a shoot, and Saturday I was actually busy with shoots as well. Um, so I thought today's been the earliest chance I could get on with you guys to actually have a, a, a chat about a few things. So um, pop in, say hi. I'm going to leave it a little bit on here with the pre-show. Let me just put up pre-show so people know what's going on. Um, I might just make this so it's not quite so bright. Um, yeah, so pop in and say hi. Um, love to see how many people come in. Also, if you can, as people pop in, guys, please give me a thumbs up. It just lets people know that I'm uh, actually here. So let me say hi to the people that are on here. If you want to skip and you don't want to watch all this pre-show, please don't bother whinging about it. Just skip to where you see the Osla Images sign, or I'll even have a timeline underneath so you'll know when the show uh, officially starts. But I did want to give it a few minutes just to say hi to everyone before we actually start. Um, so let's see who's actually here. So we have comment culture. Um, one more view on my videos and I'm up to 100 views. Woohoo! Casper uh, said, what, 20 minutes? No, <laughs> I just had to put a time in for the, you have to put in a time when you're doing these events in. Um, Photo Mix here, good day, Mike, how are you, buddy? Casper um, said, G Master 2470 is way better. <laughs> Um, Fatimek said, then the 2870 F2 in your dreams. I agree. I, look, I'm going to talk about that lens uh, shortly. It's way past my um, expectations of what that lens can do. Um, Mike saying, howdy. G'day, Mike. How are you? Um, Gerald says, hi, David. Uh, good to see you in here, Gerald. Wayne says, hello. Roy's also here. G'day, Roy. Um, Flyball Ariel said, when will they announce the event? When did they announce the event? That's Well, it's coming on the 18th, I believe. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, Daniel said, hey, do you think the A6700 or the A7000 will actually be announced? Um, is that Ziggy? I think it was my dog just came in. Um, well, I'll talk about that shortly, Daniel. We're going to go through some of these announcements to see what we think is going to come up. Um, Comment Culture said, smashing the like button. Uh, Fatty Meek said, uh, yeah, yeah, catch up and hit the thumbs up. Thanks, mate. Flyball said, hello from Los Angeles. Duncan said, hey, Dave from Adelaide. Peter said, great photos. Hi, all. Thanks, Peter. I'm just going to show you a couple of those and discuss them with you in a minute. Um, Mark said, was the delay because of the wife? <laughs> No, she was all right. The worst part was I had to then order the iPhone, uh, well, the new iPhone, which comes on Friday for me. I get it before you guys. So I also ordered the new iPhone. I'm getting the Max, uh, the large one, um, the 256 gigabyte one I'm getting. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I don't think she knows yet. I'll, ha I'll have to wait uh, and tell her about that one. I didn't want to hit her with everything all at once. Grady Film said, sup? Um... Comment said, hey, Flora, uh, Ron said, hi, uh, Shaku said, hello as well, Mario is also here, Wallace is here, um, complete newbie on here, I was hoping you said newbie, not complete nude, <laughs> uh, Anu said, hello everyone, channel 20, SR said, hey, Tox Vision said, hey Dave, g'day Tox. Flyball aerial photographer said, hey, no black eyes from explaining the B10. No, she just rolled her eyes. I walked in and she just rolled her eyes. But you know what? I showed her the results that I did the other day. Um, particularly if you've checked my videos down below, and I'll talk about the, pre, uh, the Profoto B1 first, actually, and I'll just change it around because I want to discuss that with you. Um, I'll talk about that with you. And when she saw the results, I think she could see how much value it's actually going to be for me. Um, Altrick's saying, hello, uh, Sabir's here, hell, Comic Culture, always a bonus fly ball. Um, what pre-show are we talking about? I came here a bit late. No, I'm just saying this is just the pre-show. It's just before we actually start the full-on show. Anne's here from Brisbane. G'day, Anne. Comment said, laugh out loud. Channel 20 said, hello from Chicago. John said, excited for the A7000. I love my A6300, but can't wait for the 4K60P. Neither can I. I'm just dying to get that. 
Uh, Ariel said, I had to use a spare iPhone this weekend because DJI hates Android. Oh, interesting. Uh, Fatamex said, I'm getting the XR. Yeah, well, I've got the, I've got the iPhone X at the moment. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm going to get, I've grabbed the iPhone every day on release uh, that it's been done. So I'm just going to go for the larger screen again uh, and just see what it's like. Um, Flyball says, I can't, I can't call them incompetent because, um, fly oh, you're talking about the drone. Barry's also saying hi. Peter's also saying, hoping for an A6 APS-C and an A9 body. I'm going to talk about that shortly. Gene says, hello, Dave, new 8000. Well, let's hope so, but I'm, I'm not sure, but we're going to discuss it. Uh, and that's about it. So how many have we got on now? 116. So guys, if you can, please give me a thumbs up. Just gets people to know that I'm online. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm going to just quit this. For, um, let me just get rid of this pre-show business. Um, Flyball said, judging from the photos you posted on Instagram and Facebook book, I can see where the money is spent. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it so far. I can tell you that much. Mario said, do you think Sony will get internal 10-bit on their next A7000 or A7S3? Perhaps on the A7S3. I don't think you're going to see it on an A7000 though, Mario. Uh, Flyball, I mean. I, I don't think... I oh, know that was Mario. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see that at all. Common Culture says, always a good time here. Good community, David. Said before he wants this to be like a bunch of mates hanging out talking about cameras, and that's exactly what it feels like, and that is exactly what I like this to be like. Just a, a group of friends sitting around a table uh, with like-minded uh, views just talking about cameras and, and having a chat, basically. Uh, that's the way I love it that way. Um... Sabur said, okay, got it. Hail pre-show, yep. Hector's also here as well. My boy Dave, hello from New Jersey. So great to see you all here, guys. So uh, I'm going to initially talk about the uh, thing. I'm going to mix it up a little bit because I've just brought it in because I wanted to talk to you about the um, uh, Profoto B1 because it's, it's really quite interesting. Oh, actually, let me put on the Oster images just so I know where to start the show today and then we'll begin the show. So hang on just for a second. G'day everyone, just having a drink of my coke. Still not beer o'clock for me yet, but I can tell you what, it's starting to get closer to beer o'clock for me, uh, where I'll be sharing a stubby with you guys. Um, basically, we've just had a pre-show, so if you've skipped that, uh, you feel free to go back. If not, we're just going to basically start talking about the show from now. I've got a few things I'm going to discuss with you today about rumours and new releases and things like that. But I thought I'd start off just talking to you about how I went with a pro photo the other day. And I'm only going to show you a couple of uh, samples just so you can see the results that I was actually getting. And then you can go back and have a look if you wanted to have a look back at the um, two videos that I've just posted. And I have got a couple of others that I'm going to post. Uh, it was also using the Tamron as well, the 28 to 75. And I use that all day. I originally intended to take the 70 to 200 and even my baddest, but I decided on the day just to shoot with the 28 to 75 to see how it goes. Because I've got weddings that are starting from this week. Now, from this week, I have weddings until after Christmas. So I've got three to four months of weddings every single weekend. So I am going into my really busy period now. And I wanted to try the lens fully sort of in this test scenario before I use it on the weekend. So I am going to use the 2470 uh, lens uh, in this coming wedding to see how I actually go with it. Um, by the way, we will have a chat at the end. So just to open up the chat so I can show you, um, if you want to get my attention, just make sure you do put at the at David Osler. Um, because it'll make sure that I don't uh, miss something. Trevor said, how are you feeling about the output of the Pro Photo so far? And that's what I'm going to talk about in a second, Trevor, actually. Um, so it, it's, it's an interesting scenario because an awful lot of people were sort of mentioning about the price of that Pro Photo, and I wanted to sort of talk to you a couple of things about that, which was interesting. I was just on um, some of the news groups that I actually follow. I think it was DP Review. Uh, one of the uh, groups that I was actually just following on there had a whole thread basically talking about how the Godox flashes were misfiring on certain Sony cameras. And this is one thing that I did want to discuss with you, coming from a professional aspect of how I work and expectations with clients and things like that. Now, some of you may say this has never happened to you, um, but I can definitely tell you that when I used to fire with the flash point that I had, 
or the Flash Pro, which is a, a Godox renamed brand, the firing wasn't consistent. And what I mean from that was, it, yes, it worked pretty good and it, it did fire most of the time, but every so often it would misfire. Now, there's probably a reason for that, and, and I'm going to explain why this probably happens, is that with any of the third branded flashes like Flashpoint or Godox or whatever, they've been reverse engineered. So they're not Sony backed. And that's the interesting thing about this, that because they're reverse engineered, they potentially will never work as well as if something is engineered to work with Sony's permission. And that's one of the differences between this uh, say a Godox flash to say a Profoto flash. Now I'm only talking from my experience in the fact that I have never, in the time that I've had Profoto, had it misfire. It just never ever misfires. And I can be 300 meters away and it will still fire every single time. And that's important to me because I tried Godox for a little while, that Flashpoint one, and it would misfire every so often. And it actually is frustrating if you're dealing with a paid client to have to say that, oh, oh look, it, it, something just went wrong, it didn't fire. So there's an issue there that for me personally, from a professional use where I'm getting paid clients paying me good money, um, that I don't want that sort of thing to happen. Now, it's the same thing with the Tamron 28 to 75. The reason why that lens is working so well on Sony is because Sony have given Tamron permission to use their mount. So they've obviously shared all of their features with Sony to enable that mount to work so well. That's the reason why the autofocus is so fantastic on that lens. That's also why you can upgrade the firmware through that lens. Now, the interesting thing is that every time there's a new um, firmware update in the um, Sony cameras or there's a new camera announced, Profoto release firmware updates to release their air remotes and also their strobes. So those firmware updates then make that strobe work fully with that camera. That's because Sony have given them the permission to actually use that. And that's the reason why for me, yes, it, it is incredibly expensive. The flashes are incredibly expensive, but I look at it from a paid point of view that I don't want any of those issues with things like misfiring. And it'll be interesting to see if any of you guys have had that misfiring on Godox because that was quite a big thread there and a lot of people were saying they were having trouble particularly with the A7R 3 and things like that. But anyway, let me know, but I have, I have sampled that before. So having said that, um, I wanted to talk about the actual unit itself and how it went. Uh, I have put up one video um, already on this, but I was blown away by how well this flash worked. Now, let's, yes, look, we're going to get people that can say, yes, you can buy five Godox flashes. That's not what this is about. I'm talking from coming from an area where, for me personally, in my business, I can write everything off and I can justify the expense of these things by my business and having a couple of shoots, you know, two weddings or, or one wedding, and it's going to be basically paid off. So that's the way that I'm looking at, at, at this. Now, Having used it, the interface was just stunning. I had two guys that came with me on the day and they were blown away by the light as well. I think one of them particularly is thinking about buying it. Um, it, it was just stunning. And, and to have the ability to you know, control all this from the one unit itself, that's, that's your intensity. And then if you hold it down, you can change the color into the background. Having that ability to um, go immediately from flash to using continuous light was incredible. And I, th and I think it's going to probably change the way that I shoot because normally I'm going around and I'm carrying my Profoto B1s and I also then have to carry around my like Roto Near lights or ice lights or whatever I'm using. This probably won't replace ice lights because I like the long ice lights, but it certainly would replace something like where I'm using my Neo Roto lights um, because it, it gives a similar sort of feel to that. The power was uh, way stronger than what I actually thought it was. And to show you the results that I was getting, let me just switch over to Lightroom and I'll, I'll take you through some stuff. So um, I was shooting on the day uh, through multiple things. When I was going through this type shoot here, uh, the flash itself was, let me just open this up and I'll, um, I've got to just get the thing so I can draw for you guys. Um, the flash was over here, so it was over this part over here and it was through a two foot octa, um, which has double uh, diffusion 
inside that reflector and it had a grid on and it's you can see that it's lit Rebecca up beautifully in that case. Now this was on really quite low power. I was using TTL and it, it was using quite low power. But one of the tests I did want to try was to see how it actually worked um, with uh, overpowering the sun and I'm going to show you that. I have filmed this so you're getting a sneak peek um, of what this flash can do. But in some ways I probably would like to go the B10s uh, rather than having the um, the B1s that I've got because I was quite surprised with how much power it actually had. So let's have a look at a couple of these images anyway and I'll take you through them. So that's that's basically how I got this ami uh, image. I exposed for this background and then I actually uh, had that flash directly onto Rebecca and that's why you can see her face beautifully lit up and there's a little bit of flow onto her body coming down through here. But then when I went to the continuous light, what happened was I went into this area that had this lovely curved roof that went over the top of uh, Rebecca. And I didn't want to, I could gel, yes, but then I'd have to go around playing with it to get the exposure correct and everything else. This only took me about two, three seconds to dial in the exact temperature and color balance uh, with the light. I just turned it onto the continuous light. So it was no longer using flash and it basically um, then was using the continuous light. Now the interesting thing was that this was through the diffuser. So this was through the two foot octa. So there was enough power to go through the two foot octa to light Rebecca up um, and basically uh, without having, uh, I thought initially I was gonna have to not use the diffuser to get enough power to come through the actual uh, diffuser. I thought I'd have to use it bare. But to have enough power to say to go through this two foot octa, yes, it was reasonably close. I mean, I didn't have it that far away. It was probably up around about just off, well, it's not in the camera. It was off, just off the camera over here. So it was about there. You can see the fall off that it's given it through there. It's given lovely soft light because it's diffused. Now that, that diffuser has two stops of diffusion material in it. So that shows how universal and what really a type of game changer this flash will be. Now I've got no doubt that Godox will eventually re-engineer this like they have with the other lights. Um, but to have the ability at the moment to go from flash and then immediately go over to continuous light to get this type of image through the diffuser and see what I'm getting with continuous light is incredible. Now, not only could I balance the power, I could also adjust the color so it matched the environment perfectly. And that's something that no other flash out there can offer you. Uh, and it really, I think, is gonna change the way that I shoot completely. I can see myself just shooting weddings with this totally just going in and using this as the only flash that I use and the only continuous light that I use for the whole day. So yes, it's expensive, but boy, do you get a marvelous piece of engineering for that uh, money. Like, it is, it's absolutely gorgeous to actually look at. The controls are stunning. Now, the battery on this is tiny, and I use this for the whole day, and basically I think um, the guy that was helping me, I had a couple said it had only lost one bar. Now you get 400 full charges per day. I think on an average doing a wedding or whatever, I'll get well over a thousand images off this, which, which is just incredible. I've bought a second battery, but I don't probably think I even need it because the interesting thing with this is that you can actually charge this as you use it, which, which is unbelievable. Now, let me just show you something as well. Um, it also has this app built in here that if I turn it on, you'll see that, oh, I've got the wrong thing on actually. I'll put the Bose on. Where are we? Um, it's got this Pro Photo app through here. Now you can take photos with your iPhone with this. It will actually flash, put a flash off with your iPhone. Now I'm not quite certain what that's for, but uh, you can do that. Now if I switch over to controlling the camera, I'll just show you, remote control. Now you can see now that um, it shows me what I've got on the actual flash unit. And then if I go here, you see that I can control this from my flash. Now I can have, I think up to something like, I don't know, there's, there's, I don't know the limit of number, but you can 
put this for each of your flash that you would use. It would show up inside the app through here, and then you can control your power rating through here. If I want to turn the continuous light on, so if I had this on a stand in a wedding, and I want to turn this on, I can just click on the continuous light here, and then basically, it's hard to do because I'm not looking at the thing. Then I can control, oh, hang on. Let me just turn that off. I've got the cover on. <laughs> Where are we? All right, so if I want to turn on the uh, continuous light and it's on a stand, I can just click on there. Then I can control the power of, oh, it's hard to t do this way because I can't see it. Then I can just control the intensity. So I can go up, I can go down, up and down. So this could be on a stand, it could be on a gorilla, po a gorilla pod, and I can then also change, let me put it up full so you can see the, it's hard because I can't see it. Oop. All right, now if I try and find the color intensity, that's gone blue and it does go above daylight and it will go down to being warm as well. And you can see it's, it's all real time, it's using Bluetooth. I mean, it's, it is incredible. I, I seriously could see myself using, say, three of these on light stands and then being able to control it through this app. And it's that light, basically. I mean, you could stick this. It has a mount that you can see here. You can screw this directly onto a, a uh, light stand or a tripod or whatever you wanted to do. It also comes with a stand as well. Uh, you could also put it on a gorilla pod and mount it in a tree or whatever you wanted to do it with. And... I just, I just, I look, look, I know people are going to say it's too expensive, but it is incredible. Now, to show you where I was really surprised with how this went was I went outside and we, um, I wanted to test it to see how if it could overpower the sun. Now, I deliberately did this at 6.3 because I wanted to, there was no point testing this wide open. Rebecca here is lit by the, um, lit by the sun directly behind her. So I faced her directly behind her and um, I wanted to see if this would work. Now, I, I think uh, the guy that had this was, I was surprised. This was the part that actually surprised me. I had this on eight. This goes up to 10. And he backed up probably about four meters away from her. So it was quite a way and he could still light her up. Now I've used one eight hundredth of a second here at 6.3 and it's ISO 100 and I'm 75 mil. And it's lit her up. And this is a 250 watt um, strobe. So I was really surprised at how much power this had. Now, having said that though, um, let me just clear that for a second. Now that's unedited. Uh, having said that though, um, I'll show you the only way you can get that power is by using something like this. And I don't know what Voodoo Pro Photo do, but... They use this. They use this thing called a magnum reflector. Now it must be something to do with this ribbing that they have inside the lens. So you get two stops of extra light by using this on uh, the um, that light. So in other words, I'm starting to wonder about whether I even need the Profoto B ones anymore. Um, so that's something that I'm going to have to think about in the coming weeks whether I sell off the B1s, uh, their 500 watt strobes, and then buy uh, you know, one or two more of these. I'm not sure, but I am so impressed with how this works. You know, I mean, it worked beautifully. And if you look through the images itself, I was very happy with the results uh, that came up. That, like I said, that was using the continuous light. That was also using the continuous light. Uh, there was one here of Rebecca just walking um, through the, uh, one of the buildings in Melbourne. And like I said, this video is still to, to come yet, so you'll see this shortly. This was also Rebecca um, sitting in, in the sun there having a sort of, I wanted to get a, a vintage type look where she, she was holding that camera. Uh, and again, the light is just off over here out of camera range and it's lit her up beautifully just through that area there. Um, but just stunning. And like I said, I, I even had the power to overpower the sun using HSS. The TTL worked fantastic. It just does that thing with Profoto, which for some reason um, always tends to be a little bit over. Um, 
but I'll just you can just dial that down. Once you know that, you just underexpose your flash. You just take flash compensation down by a stop, and then it'll be perfect every single time. For some reason, Profoto always gives me a little bit hotter in the exposure than what I expect. Um, but really interesting scenario. So at this stage, I'm so happy with that light. Uh, it's just amazing. Yes, it cost me 2400 I think it's about $1,900 US or 1500 US. I can't remember. Uh, so it is really quite expensive. But at the moment, there's nothing out there that has anything like it. And the ability to have a, a battery un operated unit to be able to be charged as you're using it so it won't run out. So it could be used just as strobes in a studio. It'll have the continuous light that runs for 70 minutes on full power. Or you could have that plugged in and you could run it forever. Uh, it has the um, Bluetooth, which has that full control like I showed you a minute ago. And to have that LCD uh, built in that gives you the continuous light and you can also control the color temperature it is just amazing. Uh, anyway, so that, that's all I wanted to talk to you about that. If you have any questions about it, just fire away and I'll answer that at the end because now I want to go through some of the Sony uh, rumors and stuff. So I just wanted to give you a, a brief overview of that. I will have another couple of videos coming up. I might have one later today or early tomorrow. Uh, but there we go. All right, so let's start with today's first story. Um, and I wanted to go through this first because they're saying that the next... Sony press event is going to be on Tuesday, September the 18th, and they're still saying they're expecting new lenses. Um, and I think at this stage, they're not saying that they're going to get a new camera uh, at this stage. I think they're only saying there's a very low chance that there'll be a new camera. I think 50% uh, is, but they're saying there's a 90% chance of getting the Sony 24mm 1.4 GM, and there's a 70% uh, chance of getting the 135mm f1.8. Um, there's a 50% chance of Sony high-end APS-C camera. This is the one that they were talking about of, of replacing the, the Sony A6000 with a, like a mini A9 type camera. So this is uh, only a 50% chance at this stage. Um, so it's possibly going to come up in Photokina. So we're, uh, there's another announcement coming up on the, I can't remember what date it is. It might mention this, uh, September the 25th. So that's probably more where they would announce something like the new um, A7000 or the A7S III. But we'll talk a little bit about that um, soon. Uh, another thing as well is they're saying a 20%, only a 20% chance of an A7S III to be announced. Um, so it's it's looking less likely that we're going to get that. And there's also a new entry-level camera, which I'm going to talk about uh, shortly. Um, and 15% of some none other uh, rumor coming out. So it looks like at this stage, we're only going to see that probably the 24mm 1.4 GM and the, maybe the 135 1.8 GM. Oh, Kerry, what am I going to say to you? Um, I'm, <laughs> I think even if they were, look, I'd love a 135, but even if I think it's released, I'm probably going to wait and see what happens first with, uh, the camera announcements. <laughs> I, I don't want to do it to Kerry again, not so quickly after I've just spent all this money. Um, but a 135 particularly would really interest me. I'm not really that interested in the 24 GM, but others let me know in the chat whether you would be interested in that. That doesn't really interest me that much at all, but um, I would dearly love to get something like the 135 GM. I'm still hoping to uh, get a review unit of the 105 Sigma. Um, I, I can't understand why that's taking so long to organize, but I'm hoping that that also happens because I may potentially get the 105 before I got the 135 mil GM. So it's going to be interesting because it's also going to be interesting to see how much they charge for that. I think it's going to be really expensive. Let me know what your guesses are on what they'll charge for a 135 GM. Um, so that's, that's that story. So it looks like at this stage we possibly will just get the two lenses. And I think then in Photokina we obviously may get the... Um, we may get the uh, A7000, or we might get the A7S III. But I did notice the other day, and I want to have a separate discussion about this, so I'm not going to talk about this very much, but I did notice that ES, EOS HD had a big discussion about whether they thought Sony were even going to announce an A7S III. 
um, due to the fact that there's no competition really there yet. And uh, they thought that the A7 III particularly is good enough. And that's an interesting talk that I'm gonna talk to you about in a separate video. So stay tuned for that because I'd love to have a, a, a discussion about that with you guys. So let's go to the next story anyway. Um, I'm gonna put this up first uh, before we go to the Tamron one. Um, First rumours, now this is only SR1, but they're saying there's rumours about an entry-level full-frame E-mount camera priced at $1,500. So this is quite interesting, and let me know in the chat later, and I'll come back and have a talk with you about this. Do you really think that Sony need uh, an entry-level E-mount camera, or do you think that the A6300, 6500 uh, would suffice, seeing that they'll probably keep those cameras uh, going, as they already have before, um, do you really think that there's another reason why they would want uh, an entry-level APS-C camera? I'm not sure that we need it, but let me know what you think about that in the comments because it's really interesting and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like it is only an SR1, it's saying 10% chance at this stage of that actually happening. But like I said, if this is entry-level, is it going to be any better than an A6300 or an A6500? So... Where is this going to fit in? Uh, is the body going to stay the same like it did look in that, that it looks you know, it, like it would stay the same as the A6500 series? Um, would it be worthwhile to have a camera that's $1,500 for around that price range? I'm not sure it's really needed. Um, but let me know in your comments about that um, anyway. Um, I just wanted to talk about this briefly because there was there's a number of reviews up on... Um, Sony Alpha Rumors there. There's one by the uh, photographer and also Jason Vong, Jonathan Stewart and myself actually, have, we've put up reviews for the um, Tamron. And if you look at all of them, all the reviews are talking about uh, how great uh, that lens actually is. And it's like I said to you that um, I am definitely gonna use that in this week's wedding. I'll, I'll have two cameras probably on me. I think the way that I'll probably work is I'll have um, a 16 to 30, I'm gonna try this for this weekend's wedding. I'm gonna try and shoot a little bit differently and have a 16 to 35 on one camera, and then I'll have the 28 to 75 on my next camera, and try and shoot with both of those. Obviously, I'll have other lenses with me, like the Badass if I need to, or the, 130, the 35 f 1.4, or the 70 to 200, but I'm gonna try shooting this wedding uh, and see what it's like with shooting most of it with those two uh, lenses. So I'll let you know about how it actually goes because th that lens is just so so super sharp. I mean, if, if you're looking at those images, when you're looking at how sharp that lens actually is, it's seriously ridiculous. I mean, honestly, the, the I'm just gonna turn the filters off on this for a second. Um, when you're looking at this lens, it seriously is really quite beautiful. This is unedited. This this is as it's captured straight out of the camera. And I don't know whether YouTube's gonna show this, but um, how sharp this lens actually is. Like I said, this hasn't had sharpening or anything put on these yet. And it seriously is unbelievable. Like, it's a pity it probably won't show up in, in um, with YouTube compression, how you know how beautiful and sharp this this actual uh, lens is, and like she's not. Remember too, that's not in the center of the frame. If she's in the center of the frame, this is going to give you way more sharpness than if she's uh, like not in the center of the frame. Uh, it truly is a stunning lens for what you're getting um, with the the camera. Like I was saying, these are all completely unedited. Uh, so these still have to be adjusted for exposure and everything at this stage. So they're directly, as you'd see them, out of camera. Um, but I really can't tell you how much I think that this lens is stunning to use for the price that you're actually paying for this lens. And like I said, when you think that these are all directly out of camera with no editing at all done, the color rendition is really quite beautiful with this lens. Uh, it's incredibly sharp, particularly in the center. Yes, there is a little bit of a fall off when you're dealing with um, going to the extremes, the edges of the lens, but I don't normally shoot that way or it doesn't bother me because I've never had a, a person say to me that the lens is not sharp and I've never had a client that will say that. 
And it, it seriously is a beautiful lens for the money that you're actually paying for this uh, lens. Stay tuned for these uh, images because I've got these coming up where you're going to be able to see uh, me go through these shoots and just to sort of see how, how they are. So stay tuned for this. Um, like I said, these are all raw images. Uh, those videos that I've posted online at this stage have all been uh, raw images come straight out of camera. Um, I'm just coming down here to see if I can get some others just to show you. Um, I also tried some different images where I was shooting through glass to see how this went. It was a very blue frosted type glass and it never missed focus uh, ever. Like it was, it was just... It was just outstanding, like how well it actually worked. And I really can't wait to um, to use this and try it in a wedding scenario and just to see how how it actually goes. I mean, it, it's, it really is beautiful and stunning to use. It really is. You know, like I said, if you look at everything, see that's missed. I think it's grabbed the eye there. Um, Sometimes I forget, and this is the interesting thing, sometimes I forget to use eye focus, and I probably forgot in those cases, see it's nailed it there. And I think I've forgotten to use eye focus on that other image. Um, you can see how sharp and how tack sharp that is. Look at the skin, you can see how sharp this lens is. Uh, it, it's unbelievable and it's all you would ever want. And this is why I'm saying, unless you need the 24 mil, there's no way I would go over and buy a, a G Master lens. There's no way. This lens is incredibly light. It, it's just gorgeous to use. Like, you know, it's it's great. You can use it on a gimbal. Um, yes, it takes a little bit to get used to the, the zoom rings on the opposite end. But the focus is as fast as, it may not be as fast as the 55, but I'm telling you what, it's close. The focus on this is just unbelievable. And I've showed you the colors. The colors straight out of camera are amazing. They're not retouched. There's nothing being done to those images. They're raw, so they're not even JPEG that you're looking at. Um, so, you know, it's it's just outstanding. And like I said to you, sharpness, you would not want anything sharper than that because that's got no sharpening added. These are the images actually as they've been taken. So, you know, that it's, it, it is just stunning. It, it's just amazing and I really can't tell you how much I actually adore um, using these these uh, lenses they, they just seriously are incredible um, it's just awesome it really is like I said it's it's so sharp uh, we then went into doing different things with walking and stuff like that and I was trying the tracking making sure that it it would follow uh, Rebecca walking, it had no issues at all. I then tried some of these more backlit type scenario shots where, you know, you can see here where she's been uh, lit with this sort of more backlight. Um, I even tried some high contrasty images. Like I said, these, I didn't like these because I don't like the shadow hitting the face. And I thought I'd try, but I said to her, I'm not very happy with how they're uh, looking. Um, but like I said to you guys, I'm always honest with you guys and I'll show you everything. I'll show you the good and the bad. Um, I wasn't quite happy with these. There was no flash UC, this was just direct sunlight. Um, and like I said, then we we did these backlit lit ones. Uh, and then I'm trying some ones with movement that if you look through here, I'm just trying to get ones where it's showing beautiful movement and stuff like that. And I just kept firing away. Uh, tracking just, just was outstanding, you know, it was just unbelievable. And this is the thing for, for I mean, I'm talking about 799 US. You can't go wrong with that lens. I know it, you could almost say the price, it's an entry level lens, but it certainly is not acting like an entry level lens. The focus is outstanding. Um, the, the color rendition that you're getting out of this looks beautiful. It's unbelievably sharp in the center. As I've showed you, it's, it's incredibly sharp. They're roars without any sharpening on at all. If I showed you the JPEGs, uh, they'd look unbelievably sharp. Um, so I really do think that you know, if you if you're looking at getting another, um, if you're looking at getting a lens and you haven't got any zoom lens at the moment, I think that's probably the number one lens that I would go for because it, it's got everything you need apart from if you need a wider lens. But remember, the price you're paying for that lens, you could then get a um, a really good prime wide angle, and you're still saving money over what you'd pay for the G Master. So. 
I, I cannot wait, and I never used to, I always used to say to people, I only want to stick with Sony Professional because I've, I've got the lenses there in case if I have a breakdown, I can send it off to Sony Pro Support. I still believe that in the fact that I've got those lenses there if I need them. And if the Tamron failed, I'm fully covered by, um, I'm fully covered that I can use my uh, Sony lenses like the 35 1.4 and the 85, which I still may need if it's really low light. But I would be seriously tempted now if Tamron bought out a 70 to 200 f 2.8 uh, that was has similar qualities to the 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 20 uh, the 28 to 75 that I'd probably get it um, because again as I've said to you before the reason why I've got the Sony 20 uh, 70 to 200 f 4 is due to the weight and that's the thing if they can bring out a Tamron that it weighs the same as my f 4 version but it's f 2.8 and it's as sharp as what this lens is. I seriously would think about getting it. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts on that because I'd be really curious to know what you think about you know, what I've just showed you. Uh, the last story which we're going to go before we open up to Q&A is um, this. And I think this is the only thing now that can push Sony to bring out the A7S III earlier. I think if they don't do this, if Panasonic launch isn't good, we may not see it for a while. And that's what scares me a little bit. So I'm hoping that Panasonic do nail this right from the start. But there's a couple of interesting things which I'm not sure that I like about this is the fact that they're saying that the mount is going to be a Leica mount. So they only have six lenses. Now they are incredible lenses, but boy, are they going to cost you some money. Um, so it's going to be interesting or whether they have adapters that you can just use to, to use other lenses or whatever is not known at this stage. Uh, I think they're saying that it's going to be September the 25th. Um, so this worries me that this is after the Sony announcement because the Sony announcement is the 24th. So I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Um, and I'd love to know your thoughts. If, they, if Panasonic bring out an uh, incredible ca uh, camera that really challenges Sony or ups what Sony have got at this stage, you then might see an A7S III announced very soon after that. Uh, so you know it's going to be interesting to see which way uh, this goes. And they're saying in here that not Canon and not Nikon, but Panasonic might be the most serious Sony A7, A9 uh, competition. So, you know, that, that's a really interesting statement there, and I think they might be right. Uh, but we have to wait and see what type of specs this has. So let's open it up to questions now, because I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. Um, so we'll spend a little bit of time on that. Um, and we'll see what you guys have to say in that regard. So let me scroll back because I'd love to see what you're all saying. So hopefully I won't miss many. Uh, let's, let me go back. Um, 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 um. Okay, so let's keep going down. Um, Duncan said, I uh, love the lens compression of the Tamron 28 to 75. What's the weight of it? I think it's 500, uh, I think it's 590 grams, I think. 550 grams, somewhere around that. It, it, it is very, very light, uh, and that's one of the beauties of it. I can sit that on my Moser Aircross, and that takes the weight no problem at all with an a, A7 III uh, or an A9. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's fantastic. Um, what else? Uh, I'm just trying to scroll through. Oh, we're talking about the, um, flash sync. And I'm curious to see if people were talking about that, that some of the Godox did have, uh, fire problems or where they don't fire, um, it said, I don't fire them in rapid succession. I do use HSS, which I realize can cause heat to heat up fast. Oh, you're talking about the flash is probably not working. Um, would uh, 120 frames per second be best used for rapid moving cars, uh, slow uh, planes, etc.? You're talking about if you want to slow it down, Daniel. Um, I'm not sure if what you mean by that. Um, Arthur said, had misfires with Flashpoint, then they sent me a new one, all good. They also say, apparently, from when I was reading that um, uh, news group this morning, talking about the misfiring, they say you have to turn off your front cut and uh, 
first, what is it? Yeah, I, I, see, I never ever have to turn it off because the pro photo never has an issue with it. Is it your front curtain shutter or whatever it is? I'm just trying to see if I can find it because I think it's actually that that they're saying uh, you should turn off. Electronic front curtain shutter. Uh, I believe they're saying you can get problems with Godox if you leave electronic front curtain shutter. This second, let me see if it'll focus. That second one down. Uh, if you turn that off, um, I believe that can stop that misfiring. That's what I was seeing anyway from that group. For some reason, I've never ever had to with the Pro Photos, and it probably is that fact of having it built with Sony. Uh, that they've allowed Sony to, to use, obviously, uh, their hardware to engineer to that. So they've got permission from Sony to do that. And that might be a reason why I've never had to turn that off. But I believe with some of the Godox, if you have misfiring, that you need to turn that off to get it to work. Um, see, Gerald said he's had five Godox flashpoints and never had any issues. Um, Flyball Aerial Photography said, uh, have you utilised the phone app uh, they have for the Pro Photo? Well, I showed that, Flyball, so I wanted to show that there. Um, Trevor said, David Oster, do you know anyone shooting the AD200 and did you consider getting one? No, I haven't, Trevor, because I wouldn't need to. The, the thing for me is, remember that um, I'm shooting from things that I've purchased myself. And that that's the thing. It, it, and I may one day go out and get that so that I can help some of you guys. Um, and that was the reason why I ended up getting that Flashpoint one, because I thought, well, I'll get that and use it uh, to basically show you how I can use that instead of, say, having Pro Photo. Because there's, no, there's nowhere near the amount of people have Pro Photo that have, say, the Godox lights out there. So I did buy that to use. But I just didn't like using it. So I've got it in the, I've just got it in the, in the back studio there. I really should sell it. But I may one day, say, get something like an AD200 or something around that so that I can show some of you guys how I would use it. But remember, when you're looking at my tutorials that I'm actually shooting with, it wouldn't matter if I'm using Godox or what, or Profoto or whatever I'm using, because the process is still the same. And this is what you have to understand, that the lighting process is still exactly the same. And this is why I'm saying I, I'm not bagging Godox at all. And, and they are probably perfect for what most people are using. They're just not for me. But the process is still exactly the same. So it wouldn't matter if I'm showing how to use an AD200 or if I'm showing how to use the, the Profoto B10. The process is exactly the same. It's only the gear that changes and that really is irrelevant. Uh, so that's the reason why I've never really bothered with it because I do always say, usually in my videos, that uh, it wouldn't matter if this was just the Godox light, it would be the same uh, way that you would shoot this. And it's just you're changing one bit of gear with another. I didn't say that in the Pro Photo ones I've just released because obviously uh, I was out to get people interested who were thinking about getting the Pro Photo B10. Um, so I didn't usually say that. But the process would be exactly the same. But yeah, I may one day get uh, an AD200 just to try it. And then so that I could probably show you guys. But like I said, the process would be exactly the same. Um, Anu said, I thought Sony ha had claimed that the E-mount is an open mount. Um, so unlike Nikon Z-mount, Tamron doesn't need to take... S no, that, that's not true. Uh, the mount they can build to, but they have to reverse engineer. There's a reason why you can update the Tamron lens through the Sony uh, camera. That's because Sony have given permission for Tamron to do that. And they've also given Pro Photo permission for them to do that as well with their flashes. That's why there's updates all the time when the uh, new cameras come out for, for the uh, Pro Photo Air Remote and the Pro Photo um, flashes, strobes. They don't have to reverse engineer. Sony gives them those details. Remember, if you reverse engineer, it's never ever going to be as good as having something native. A Tamron acts like a native Sony lens. The Pro Photo is acting like a native Sony uh, flash. Um, 
Phone me X said if I had the money, I would go for Profoto. Profoto equals Apple. Godox equal Android. And you're right, it, that, and that's exactly true. You get what you pay for, and this is the thing that you do. And like I said, I've had those B1s for years now. I've, I can't remember when I bought them. I've had them for years. I've dropped them that many times I can't count. Like Kerry's literally dropped it probably from two meters high, and I thought that's it, the flash is gonna be no good, and it still works perfectly. Those batteries are the same batteries I bought from day one. They've never ever had problems with recycling or recharging, losing power. Like I said to you, it fires every single time I put it on. It will fire from 300 meters away and it flashes every single time, never ever misses. I, I honestly can say I've never counted a time where I've had a Profoto flash misfire. And these are things that matter to me. Now they may not matter to you and that's fine if that's the case, uh, like I said, there's nothing wrong with Godox at all. They are fantastic flashes, uh, and, and it's basically what you can afford. Like I said, there's always a market for a Ferrari, and there's always a market for uh, a, um, a Ford. And it's, it's really interesting because people, and this is what gets me sometimes about photography and, and photographers. The media, you say um, that you've bought a pro photo, you'll get 20 people on there saying, but I can buy... 15 or whatever, five Godox flashes for that same money. But if you've bought a Ferrari, people don't go out and say, but you could have bought 15 Fords for that same money. That They don't think that same way, but it's the truth. And it's the same with cameras. You can say that you want to buy the ultimate A7R3, and then you, if you could say you've bought that, but then someone could say, well, you could go out and buy a cheap Olympus or something like that. You could buy three of those for that same camera. And it's the same process. And that's what people have to think. Um, you really shouldn't bag people for having high-end gear. And in some ways you should probably thank them because I guarantee that Godox have re-engineered what Profoto have done. They've done all that development early on and then you'll get uh, China, these manufacturers, re-engineer all the lights that come out. It recently happened with the ice lights, hasn't it? Godox or whatever have brought out the, that new ice light uh, that is a direct copy sort of what they're doing. So they re-engineer it. But that probably never would have happened if, if ice lights uh, didn't bring out that original light. So in some ways you should probably thank those higher-ended cameras for giving you this high-ended stuff that then is reverse engineered to give you cheaper stuff that comes down. Um, let's keep going. But this is why I'm saying if you use Godox, you should be happy. Godox are, are fine. It's just not for me. Um, how much are the B10s? Well, I, like I said, I paid 2 4 2400 Australian, so they're expensive DMAC. Uh, they're not cheap, and I wouldn't recommend if you weren't earning money to buy those lights. I'd definitely recommend for you to go out and get Godox. There's no way I'd recommend if you weren't earning photography as a full-time living to go out and buy a Profoto B10. No way. Uh, what uh, modifier? I use the two-foot Octa, and I use the uh, Magnum that I showed you. Uh, I'll just see if the I'll show you the reflector. Let me see if I can get it. Now you'd be able to buy similar things for Godox, obviously. That, that this is the reflector that I used. It's got two baffles inside this. It's got this baffle here, and it's also got a baffle sort of halfway in. So it was. Uh, um, did have the two baffles going through it. And obviously, you know, you've got that typical Profoto uh, light attachment there. And then I use the Magnum. Now I'm not sure though if, uh, where'd I put that? I'm not sure if you can get these um, in Godox or the wide zoom reflectors. I'm not sure, they may have something similar. But like I said, there's some special voodoo going on here. This increased the, and I measured this on my back wall, it was nearly two stops uh, by putting this on. It, it's incredible, I don't know where it gets that how it does that, um, but really, really interesting. Uh, let me just put that down there. Uh, so let's keep going with the questions. So they're, they're the reflectors anyway that I was using. Um, Photo me, said Rebecca is a bomb. <laughs> Kiara's cancelled. Rebecca is amazing actually, she was uh, fantastic. I originally had Kiara booked in for it, but Kiara's just started a new course. Uh, for school, um, 
And so she wasn't available. So I'm not sure how often I'm going to be able to use Kiara because she's now starting university full time. So it's going to be interesting. So luckily, Rebecca stepped in for me, which was fantastic. Um, Mark said uh, the misfires happen mainly when the assistant had the receiver part on the flash pointing away from my camera trigger, but the pro triggers seem to have a stronger receiver. Um, yeah, f stoppers disagree about the power, and I, and I'm not sure where they got that from. Uh, creative Films. Uh, I can tell you, I've used it on the weekend, and there was no problem with overpowering the sun for me at all. So I disagree with f stoppers uh, rating that they gave. Um, What else have we got? Epic Sky said, my flashpoint only misfires if they haven't recycled. Um, Epic Sky says, 120 frames per second is it is all you really need for slow-mo. Yep, it is. Um, comment, comment Culture said, David, did you use the remote iPhone function? How much, how do you feel about hooking the phone to thing as a controller? Um, well, remember, you can't fire your camera from the remote controller yet, but that may come. Uh, the interesting thing is, too, you update the firmware through your phone, too. That's a really interesting thing. So uh, to upgrade the firmware for the Flash, it tells you when you click on it that there's new firmware. That's so good because you don't even need to connect it through the USB cable um, to the uh, computer, and, and that's fantastic as well. Um, it will fire the flash for your phone. Now this is the interesting thing. So when you click using the uh, strobe and you have uh, your iPhone, when you click photo, the, it fires off the flash. But it's not the flash, it's a continuous light. So I don't really understand why that's even needed because you could just put the continuous light on. So I'm not sure what that's actually even for at this stage. It's more for me to, to have the ability to control the continuous light output through the same app that I'm also can, being able to control the flash output that's a really great thing. Uh, and I really do love that. Um, you know, and it, it, really does, uh, it really does make a difference. Um, just having a look down here. So this compares to which Godox? Well, it'd be the AD200 fly ball because if you're dealing with that, I'm just having a look. If you're dealing with that, the, the rating on that camera is uh, 200 watts, 250 watts. So the AD200 is also 200 watts. But sometimes you've got to be careful about how you measure these too. And it'd be interesting to put it on a light meter and check the power output coming out of this with a light meter because uh, I think that's what you need to do. Like I said, when I used that Magnum reflector on that and I could overpower the sun and I wasn't even uh, on one, on 10, I was only actually on eight. The power was f amazing through that. And now I want to check it to see how much power difference it is between the B1s and that. The B1s are rated at 500 watts. Uh, this is rated at 250 watts. But I saw a review on YouTube yesterday and he claimed that the A, that this, 250 watts is only, a, I think it was a third of a stop difference to the 500 watt Profoto B1. So I've got to test all that myself just to see what's actually working or coming out of that. Oh, just dropped something. Um, so I, I still, excuse me a second. So I still need to, I still need to test to see how, um, how it actually is. But I'm not sure. So yes, it's, it's, Basically the same as an AD200, uh, although you've got 50 watts more uh, with that. But again, like I said, you've also got the continuous light output and you've also got the um, continuous, uh, the colour control over the uh, light as well. So that, that's a big thing that you haven't got in any other light that's out there. You, you haven't got any other light that gives you the flash output with TTL. Being able to plug into eight, uh, you know, to 240 volts or, or wall power, in other words, so you can keep using it continuously, um, and have that control over your uh, light uh, color as well. So yeah, they're they're interesting things that are out there. Um, I'm just having a look to what it says. It's sixteen hundred dollars in DMAC, Photo MX says. So yeah, that that'll tell you roughly about how much it is US. It shows a terrible exchange rate that we've got here in Australia. It cost me two thousand four hundred um, Australian dollars. Uh, 
What else have we got? Let me just scroll down. Um, can you do long exposure bulb light painting with the phone? Don't know, I've never tried it. Epic Sky says, uh, let's be honest people, one single B10 or five AD200s, which would provide better results? And that's the thing that you've got to actually uh, justify Epic Skies. And that's the thing, if, if you haven't got the money, um, clearly you would go with the, uh, with the AD200s. But, I already have B1s, I'm already in the Pro Photo system, I've already got the um, modifiers, I've got that many modifiers here in my studio, and they're not cheap either. See, again, that light, that light fitting, let me just grab it for you. That light fitting here was $300 Australian. It's, it, Pro Photo is ridiculously expensive. Um, like I said, that was 300 Australian, now, I think it's about $180 or something US. Um, so they're even expensive as well. But like I said to you, I already have stacks of these modifiers anyway in my uh, studio. So for me, I've already got three B1s. I also have uh, three D1s in Pro Photo. So I already have that. But remember, when you're talking about this um, Epic Skies, that yes, that, that's for you, that's for you. But there's a lot of professional photographers like myself that wouldn't buy five AD 200s. We would get a few pro photo lights. And this is what you've got to understand that it's for different people. I'm not saying you'd go out and get that. You would have to be a fully working photographer earning reasonable or decent money before you would go out and buy pro photo gear because it is the high-ended type gear. There's always a spot for this, just like there's also a spot out there for um, other larger cameras as well. So, you know, it, it just depends really what you want. Um, did you use TTL on the B10? Yes, I did. Uh, I used TTL, and you'll see that if you look at the video. Uh, I used TTL with it, and like I said to you, I found it was a little bit over and I had to reduce it by a stop. Um, and then it was perfect from that point on. Really, what I could do, and I just did that for the sake of doing it on the video to show how it always tends to be a little bit over flashy initially with the TTL. I tend to just use TTL first, but all you do is you have it automatically always at minus one in your exposure compensation for flash, and then you never have to worry about it again. But that's not really the way I shoot. The way that I shoot is I do a TTL exposure to start with, and then I'll immediately switch it to manual. Now, one of the great features with that is the way that it works, that the air remote um, is fantastic. So I have it on top of my camera, I, I stick it in TTL, take the shot, then just click the TTL and it goes to manual. And then I can then keep everything constant and that's the way that I shoot. I'll have to do a video about that uh, to show how I actually go about doing that. Um, how fast that control function, such a low delay. Yeah, there's no delay at all. It, it, it's incredible how fast it actually works from the phone. It, it's unbelievable. Uh, the name of the light is the Profoto B10. Um, yeah, and I agree, Creative Films. One stupid thing, and I don't know why Profoto don't do it, you cannot see the power of the strobe on the remote. And I, I don't understand why they don't do that. Um, but now you can see it on your phone. Uh, but I don't know why I agree with you. It's just stupid. I don't know why they don't give you that ability. Um, Mark says, no idea why you might want to control a strobe via the phone as the trigger is the remote for that. Yes, Mark, th there's a couple of reasons why. Because this is the first flash available there that you'll have the ability to control the uh, continuous light. There's no other light out there that has that ability to give you continuous power uh, light with also color control. So don't underestimate how good that is. And if you look at my video, you'll see how powerful that is when I uh, use that on Rebecca to give that continuous light through uh, there. That when I, I went back to, let me just come back to here. Um, rated. To have that ability to switch from doing uh, strobe work and then all I do is turn on the uh, continuous light and I can get that immediately. There's no other flash can give me that. 
there's nothing out there can do that. And to have the ability to control that from my mobile phone is amazing. Like I said, I can then say put these on mounts and I can control it using the uh, the iPhone app for my power for that continuous light up or down. And being a fusion photographer is, is just amazing. Now remember, you may have, and some photographers may have five of these flashes set up over all areas. And, and this is the thing that um, will make that so easy. It's quite, it's quite awkward sometimes to see if you're using five flashes, how they're all rated and the different settings on each one. And to have a graphical interface like using your phone for that, to just immediately be able to touch it and change flash ratings or output settings on each flash will make your life a lot easier if you're dealing with having lots and lots of strobes. So there is a reason where, why having that phone uh, will be really good for me. Um, Uh, let's see, what else have we got? Um, so I do use TTL for portraits, but only for the start. Yeah, uh, how fast that, fun that fast that control function, such a low delay, yes. Um, for the dollars, uh, you, sh you should see the power on the trigger. I know, I agree with Curator Films, that drives me nuts how you can't see that power. Um, Epic Sky says, touche, but even the best skilled photographer would still triumph with five AD 200s. Yes, you would. And this is why I'm saying to you that if it's for you, Epic Skies, that's fine. And I'm not saying don't buy five AD 200s. And if you want to do that, that's fine. Now, remember for me, I'm earning money and I can write this gear off for my business. I want the best gear that's possible. And so for me, that's pro photo. Now I'm not saying for you out there to not use 5AD 200s. That that's you're not getting the point that I'm saying here to you. That if you can afford it, it's an option there that you can use. Just like you could say, you could say the exact same thing of why would you need an A7R 3 You could get the same revolt, results from using a, a lot cheaper camera. Of course you can, but I've got the ability to use it. My business can pay for that and I like to have the best gear that I can possibly have, and that's why I'm using Profoto. And if you've used Profoto gear, like I have, you would not want to go back to AD200s, I can tell you that. Um, but I'm not bagging using uh, AD200s at all. That's not what I'm saying. Um, uh, Flyball says, I wonder how it works in a place with multiple Wi-Fi networks. It uses Bluetooth. So I can't see it having an issue. Um, flyby, the, the closest competitor to the 1600B10 is the Godox AD200. Um, flyby said, program multiple Bluetooth uh, demo only to get crushed in a presentation hall where everyone have Bluetooth on. Uh, well, I mean, that's possible, but remember, you can always use the air remote. You don't have to use that Bluetooth control if you don't want it. Um, Don't also forget too that when you're looking at these lights, there's no other flash available battery lights that you can plug into uh, AC wall power to, to plug into the wall and run continuously. So you could use this as a studio light, you can use it as a continuous light with color control and battery operated power all in the one unit. There's nothing yet available that can do that. So don't underestimate that part of the flash. Um, Becky with the red hair, I know she's got beautiful glowing red hair, it's stunning. Um, what else have we got? I showed you the modifier that I used. Um, Photomix said, that's the thing, it, in a huge softbox where you use all that power. Um, comment culture said two stops but smaller light cone being projected more focused beam uh, that's obviously yeah when you uh, put those diffuse uh, those these sort of things on it's, it's obviously expanding it's also that ribbing on the edge that uh, makes it so much more uh, higher output as well um, what else have we got Fatimiak said yup um, Mark said, uh, I shoot for Latina magazine and never got knocked back using Godox. I always need strobes to overpower the sun for beach work uh, and my 600 is my main light. Yep, nothing wrong with that at all, Mark. Completely agree with you. Um, 
Fanamiak said, HSS plus big softbox equals ma major power loss. And this is what I've got to try, Ike, too. I've got to check how the B1s, which is the 500 watts. See, when I'm going through a five-foot octa, in my studio I have a five-foot octa. These probably will not have enough power. So it, it will be interesting, and that's probably the reason why I'll keep the uh, B1s, because if I do need that 500 watts, uh, I've got to try this light modifier on my, on my B1s to see what type of power I can get off the B1s to overpower the sun. Uh, it, it should be really interesting to see what I can get from it. Um, what else have we got? Um, Epic Sky said they need the new A7000 to be announced on the 18th. Yep, I'm hoping so. Um, Comment Kutcher said sub to Ike. Yes, make sure you sub to Ike too. He's great. I watch Ike stuff all the time. Um, and Ike is one of those uh, YouTubers that actually does support other YouTubers. Like you see him on mine all the time, and I'm always popping onto his live chats as well. Um, so make sure you do subscribe to Ike, guys, if you haven't. Um, what else have we got? Trev have said, are you more interested in the Sigma 105 or the Sony 135? I've got to try it, Trev. The, the thing is, I'd like to try the Sigma um, 105 uh, and the Sony 135 before I make a decision on which one of those potentially I might buy. Um, because I, I, I would love to try it just to see. I might find the 105 at 1.4 is enough. Um, so I'm going to wait and see. If Fathom Rocker said... Um, if the 24 GM is smallish, I would be interested. Mark said the 135 is a great lens, but not for studio unless you are doing headshots. Uh, the distance from the uh, subject is the issue. A 105 Sony would be great. Fanomiak said you all see Manny is hanging out with Jared Poland and Ken Rockwell in San Francisco. I wonder what that's about, um, Ike. Perhaps that's the new A7000 or something. Um... Trev said, Sony 135 GM3 grand. Yeah, I dread to think what it's going to actually cost. Uh, I would love a small 24, but it's going to be a monster. Flyball said, uh, choosing a camera should involve um, P.O. and going into the desert to find your spirit brand. I'm not sure what that means. 3,500 for the, it'll be four grand then in Australia. I hate to think about how much it's going to cost down here. Um, What else have we got? Um, Flyball said, Photo me, I saw considered ditching work, then I remembered I'm supposed to be a responsible adult. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, I would buy an A5 if it was below 1500. Uh, Photo said, The A7 III is a beast. Sony is only competing with the cells at the moment, I know, and that's the problem. That's why I think the delays have been with them announcing anything. That you still can't buy a A7 III yet, they still held back. Uh, you've got to put them on pre-order. Um, um, right now, uh, the entry-level cameras are going to be the Sony or the M50. Um, Common Culture said, picked up my M50 for around 800 bucks Canadian. Um, Flyball Aerial says 1500 seems positioned to eat up the A7 III sales. Uh, my elephant in the room is a small battery and whether the A7000 will have the A7 III, but I hope it does have the Z battery mark. I really do hope that it has that battery. Um, Roy said, I can't see the need for a A500. Uh, what would they see, a smaller image? I'm not sure what that means. Are oh, you talking about with uh, uh, having the lower ended camera? Um, what else? I'm just trying to see where it comes. Flyball said, um, man, your MUA is on point. Um, the makeup artist, she did her own, if you're saying for Rebecca Flyball. Yeah, she did a great job. She is actually a makeup artist herself, so she did her own makeup. Um... Casper said, G Master, G Master, G Master. <laughs> Mark said, I own the 24-7 G Master and it's razor sharp. Had this glass since it was released. Heavy but excellent. Um, 
Fatimiyak said, Peter, the only thing that can destroy Nikon is Nikon themselves. Uh, how long have we been online for? One hour, 14 minutes, so I'm not going to go much longer. Gerald said, you don't own or use the Sony 24105F4. Would you still recommend the Tamron 28 to 75 over the Sony? Well, I don't own it, Gerald, um, but I would have more use for the 24 to 75 for the way I shoot in weddings, being that it's more low light type stuff for receptions and things like that. Um, so yeah, for me, and also I like to stick it on a gimbal and it's the perfect focal length for sticking on a gimbal. So for me, me the way that I shoot, the, uh, the Tamron would be better. Um, if you're traveling and things like that and you want that wider to a longer length, the uh, 24105 would be fantastic. Um, so you've got to make a decision, I think, if 2.8 means more to you, um, that that would be the lens that I'd get. So I'd probably get the Tamron over that. Well, I did because I bought the Tamron rather than buying the 24 to 105. Um, Epic Sky says, I own the 24 105 G lens and it's sharp and silent. Uh, the deal breaker is a super low light focusing. Um, and this, the focusing on the Tamron is incredible. It really is incredible. Um, beauty right there, yep. Um, Photomix says, uh, how can you forget to use uh, Sony's bread and butter feature? I know, I do, <laughs> I do sometimes, I forget to use it, Photomix. Yeah. I kick myself every time I do. Um, the other thing too is that the Tamron is so good for almost being macro. And that's where I'm going to love using that in the wedding this weekend, for getting details, the flowers, the wedding ring and the flowers. It really is like a, almost a macro lens. And, and that is so um, great to use in that regard. And see, the other thing for me is I very rarely shoot wide. Like the 28 for me usually is wide enough. If it's not, I can put my 16 to 35 on. But... I prefer to have that 75 because I love shooting at the 85 focal length. So for me, the 75 millimeter length is more important for using portraits. You know that when you're dealing with getting a, a lovely portrait length like that, this was shot at 75 and it's beautiful. So for me, having the 75 focal length is more important than say having a G Master 2470 because I would use the 75 way more than I would be using the 24. So I don't mind having the 28. See, this is, you've got to work out how you want to shoot. And, and this is the interesting thing. We all shoot differently. If you shoot wider than 28, 20, uh, than 28 all the time, if you shoot more at 25, uh, 24, well, obviously the 2470 G Master is going to be the better lens for you. But the way that I shoot is more at this uh, higher end. So having that ability to shoot 28 if I need it, yes, is an advantage. But being able to shoot something like this, you know, at uh, 75, well, that was 68. But having that ability to shoot at 75 is beautiful. You know, and it's a lovely focal length for shooting portraits. So that's more important for me. Um, what else have we got? Um... If you're not using IFS, you might as well be shooting Canon. <laughs> I don't do it often, Photomeric, but occasionally I just forget to hold the button down. Um, I wish it was smart enough that it would just come on automatically. If you had face detect and you push the button down, it would just do it. Um, it'll come eventually, but yeah, I don't do it often, but occasionally I forget and then I'll kick myself. Um, Photomeric says Kiara is cancelled. No, I love Kiara. She's fantastic. Uh, I am going to be doing a more sexy shoot with um, Rebecca, though. I want to do a shoot with her um, in a, a lovely male white um, shirt with underwear and things like that on. I'm going to do that in the studio. So I am looking forward to doing that with Rebecca. I wouldn't do that with Kiara as she's a little bit young. Uh, but Rebecca, uh, if you follow Rebecca on Instagram, um, she does have some lovely sexy type images um, so I will definitely be doing that with Rebecca shortly. Can't wait to do that one, a real sexy shoot. Um, I wouldn't buy, and the interesting thing is flyable, looking at the 2470 kit lens, there's, I used to have that lens and I sold it. There's no way I would buy the Sony 2470 F4. No way would I buy that lens. Uh, I'd get the Tamron over that any day. Um, 
Jim Penn said greets. G'day, Jim. How are you? Nice to see you on here. Oh, uh, where were we? Um, oops. I hate it when it jumps like that. Casper said, my A9 with the 2470A mount, uh, Carl Zeiss, is an incredible combo. Yep. Um, what else? Ed's saying hi. G'day, Ed. I'm going to start scrolling through these pretty quickly, guys, because we've been on here a long time. Trev said, my suspicion is that the full frame uh, camera from Panasonic, if it comes to fruition, will be really designed to deliver 6K or 8K. Maybe. That could be the thing that they really hit. Uh, with it. Um, Photomix said the X-T3 is just an APS-C G9. Yeah, uh, the X-T3 looks really nice, actually. Um, I'd be very tempted to buy the X-T3 if I, if I, problem is I'd have to buy new lenses and everything, but it certainly, I'd love to have a go of it. Gerald said, I agree, Panasonic with Samsung sensor may be the one to push Sony. Uh, that is what we Sony users need. We do, definitely. I really hope they bring out something great and then we might get the A7 III earlier. Uh, A7S III, I mean, earlier. Um, Peter said, 90% sure full frame is for 8K video. Interesting. Um, Wyatt said, uh, with the new A7000, remap the off or record button on while I'm hoping they come out with a totally different thing. Photomix says, here comes Dave responding to the comments from an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's interesting. I have to do it this way, though. Otherwise, I'll be back and forth all over the place. Um, here comes Mrs. Brown Wave. I love it. G'day, G'day I'm De Brown. Good to see you on here. Um... Fanamik said, Flyball, it may be true for you, but Apple has finesse that doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, comment, Culture said, or low end gear. Fanamik said, David is right, though. The thing is, like I said, when you're talking about high end gear, guys, you, you shouldn't be putting it on guys that do, do buy that sort of gear. There's, there's a market for everything. Now, it's like, I'll give you another analogy. And this is where you have to be careful saying stuff like this. When you say this sort of stuff, that you can buy five AD five, uh, 200s for the same price that you can buy one pro photo, you shoot yourselves in the foot. Because this is the exact same argument that people will give that why would you pay a photographer for an image that gives the, that you would pay $100 for this image, where I could go for a cheap photographer and get five images for the same money. And this is where you have to be very, very careful how you word things and how you think about things. Because this is the exact same thing that people talk about in photography, that there's people undercutting everyone else. Because I charge 450 for an hour, and inside that they get five images. Now there'll be another 30 photographers in my district that will pay $100 or even $50 for that hour and give them every single image they take. And it's the exact same argument as what I'm trying to say, that there's always a market for higher-ended stuff and there's always a market for lower-ended stuff. I'm not bagging those photographers that are charging less. That's what they are happy with and that's what they want to charge. But for some reason, people immediately start jumping down people's throats if they buy more higher-ended gear. And you shouldn't be doing that. It's like I said, you wouldn't bag someone that has a Ferrari and say you could have bought five Fords for that same money. People don't do that, and I don't understand why everyone hates someone for having more higher-ended gear. And, and really, you've got to get over that thinking, because it's exactly like I just said with photographers charging so much for money for images, and then other people undercutting. It's the exact same argument, but you'd be the people that then go and say, oh, you're undercutting, you're giving five times a gear for the same money that I'm paying. And you need to think about that. Um... That's still going. I don't know if I can get down anymore. Let me just res let me restore this chat for a minute. I think I've had a lock. I think I've got a lock in the system. Ugh. Let me just see if I can bring up something else up. Uh, I need to open up a new window. I think I've got... 
Chrome open and it's crashed, I think. I'll just bring this up so I can get another chat going on. Uh, let me just move this over. I don't know why that other thing's crashed, but it has. Uh, we'll go for a few more minutes. I have to keep going from down here because that's where it's uh, just starting from. I would way have a Ford <laughs> Expedition than a Ferrari. <laughs> I love, but see, that's personal choice. Um, But Amir said, and I don't even care for that notch. Are you talking about the Apple phones? Yeah, that's what we were talking about before. Ian Brown said, you turn on the heat, the house heat or a plug-in heater. You look so cold. Me, yeah, I'm a bit cool. Um, although, what is it today? It's, um, what are we today? It's 18 degrees Celsius today. So it's starting to warm up, guys. Um... Gerald said, the Godox light stick is very nice. It is fairly soft, comes with barn doors. Yeah, I know, Gerald bought that. And that's why I'm saying you should be happy that uh, these higher-ended ones like Ice Light bring these lights out because then China will knock it off. And the, the, you'll find the same thing will happen with the Pro Photo. There'll be a Godox light that comes out with the same features that um, the Pro Photo have used. Um, move to Queensland, ditch the jumpers. <laughs> Um, does the Tamron use three or five axis? Now there's no stabilization in the Tamron. It's like the uh, Sony uh, 25 uh, to 105. That doesn't have IBIS either. Um, what second is energy stored, not output? Uh, would you recommend getting the Fuji X-T3 over the A7? No, definitely not. I'd be getting the A7 III, definitely. Travis said, how is the environmental ceiling on the A7 Mark III? I can't decide about jumping into Nikon Z6 or Sony. Uh, I've never ever had an issue with water or rain or whatever I've used with the Sony. I think uh, it, the weather ceiling is fine for what I'd use it on. Um, Dan said, Mac Granger recently commented on Capture One instead of Lightroom. Uh, no, because I've never used Capture One. I've installed it and I didn't like it, so I got rid of it and went back to Lightroom. Uh, I'm just I'm just basically paying for everything inside of Lightroom. So it, then it works with Photoshop seamlessly. The cataloging seems to work well. So I just don't need uh, Capture One. Others love it. I just didn't want to change over. Um, Jeffrey said, Profoto is great, expensive, but I like it. Um, what else? Um, Rick said, professionals use Pro Gear. Great review and comments, David. Well, they do, but I know also quite a few professionals also use Godox gear, Rick. It's a personal choice, and this is why I'm saying I'm not bagging Godox at all. It's it's just a personal choice. I don't I want to use Profoto, so that that's what I use. Um, John said your photos you showed with the new lens and flash look like they were photoshopped. Amazing out of camera. Yeah, I know they. No, they those John, be careful. Those ones I was showing uh, have been edited. The other ones I showed where I went through them all were the unedited ones. Um, Mel said, uh, get the Sigma 105, not the 135 mil. Trust me. Um, it's may well useful and versatile, lighter, smaller, cheaper too. Uh, all you need is to take two to three steps to get the 135. Yeah, I'll have to see it. I want to try it, Mel. That's the thing I do actually want to see first. Um, Mel said, uh, if you shoot events, 2.8 is an advantage over the 24105. That's exactly my thinking, Mel. Um, Roy said, have you used the Sony 90 for macro weddings? Yes, I have used it, but not for weddings. It was too big. Uh, I used the 35 APS-C lens, and I'm happy with that, Roy. I only take one or two shots macro, so that's uh, ample for me. Mel said, I've had the older 28 to 75 over a decade ago. I use a 75 more than the wide angle. Uh, I'm the same. That's the way that I would work as well. Um... What else have we got here? I think we're nearly down the bottom. Um, Vegan Chaser said, hmm, never thought about that like that. I get paid, I need to get paid 450 an hour. Like I, I just started, 
but found work for 150 for three edited images, fashion, swimwear, fitness, portrait work, getting into video too. Remember, Vegan, I've been around for a long time, so I, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I think I'm sort of middle range in, in what I charge. That That's my average charge is 450 for, I'm always honest with you guys, it's 450 for an hour for me. Um, and then I give away the five uh, edited images, and that's that's for that hour. Uh, and that that's I can make a reasonable living. Weddings for me, the average probably I would end up earning is five thousand dollars for a wedding. That would be my average. And then obviously there's some weddings which will go up to ten more. It just depends uh, where I'm actually at. Um, Mark said there is a TV ad going on where Oz choose wisely. That's a good point for purchasing, investing camera gear. I'm not sure what that means. Alan said Sony 70 to 200 2.8 versus f4 for video work. Well, I use the 70 to 200 f4, and I'm happy with that due to the weight size. Alan, I used to have the Nikon 20 uh, 70 to 200 f2.8, and it used to hurt my back too much. That's the reason why I went away from having um, those um, larger lenses. And really, I don't use, um, I'm just trying to get this as pop out chat. Uh, I don't use, um, I don't use the 70 to 200 really for video. Uh, the lenses that I'm mostly using for video are the, um, uh, the 35 1.4, the 55 uh, 1.8, and the 85 better. So now I'll probably use the Tamron 28 to 75. They're the lenses that I mostly use for weddings. Uh, I don't use the 70 to 200 too much. Uh, if you were doing full on video, you would probably better be better off with the 70 to 200 2.8 due to the, the being having the 2.8 aperture. But I don't really use, I only f shoot Fusion, so I'm only shooting it for a small period of time. So for me, it's not worth me getting the 2.8 version. That's why I said I'd love Tamron to bring out a 70 to 200 f 2.8 because of how light it would be. Uh, any last questions before we call it a day, guys? Really would appreciate a thumbs up if you could give me one. Uh, that would be fantastic as it just gets uh, the show actually out there. Now remember, I will have a couple of um, videos up this week. I'll have more of the Tamron 28 to 75, more of me using that Pro Photo Lite, uh, and also some more with the Tamron 28 to 75 just with daylight coming up. So I'm going to have uh, that going out uh, in the coming days as well. I will be back online Friday for the normal show light today. So that will be back on Friday with you guys around the same time as today. Uh, Thomas just said, if the big YouTubers go to an event, what's your best guess? I think that the Sony a7000 will be announced first before the a7S III. Uh, I think that's probably going to come out a bit later. So my best guess is that we get an a7000 very soon. Now, those people that are out there already may be using the uh, Sony uh, 135 and the 24 as well. That could be what those guys are actually out there doing now. So we're going to have to wait and see. Um, really appreciate the chat today, guys. I know I'm going to get slammed again uh, about having the pro photo. I'm going to get that in the comments down below. <laughs> oh, well, you'll just have to forgive me. Uh, but remember, when I said that, it's the, the techniques that matter more than anything. And like I said, ignore the fact that I'm using pro photo. Just look at the way when you look at those videos, how I'm lighting up. Use that as the example to use and just replace what I'm using with the Godox and you're gonna get the same result. It's just that I like to use that gear that I use. Um, and you just have to find a similar light modifier if you wanted to get the exact same look that I'm actually getting. Uh, but I had a great chat with you today, guys. Really enjoyed it, because I missed that I couldn't get on last week. I've really missed you guys, and I really do love chatting. Like I said, it's like a whole stack of mates sitting around a table, and I really do mean that. Uh, and I've really enjoyed it. And um, please pop in for the next video. So that's all for now, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Talk again soon. Bye for now.